Uh, it is now 6.30. I would like to call the regular design review board meeting of May 4th, 2023 to order. Before I proceed, I would like to take a moment to go over our meeting protocols for today. The South Pasadena Design Review Board meeting will be conducted in person to maximize public safety while still maintaining transparency and public access. Members of the public can observe the meeting via Zoom. Uh, will staff please take roll call? Board Member Carlson. Present. Board Member Hill. Here. Board Member Younger. Excused absence. Vice Chair Sai. Here. Chair Nichols. Here. You have quorum. Next, we move on to the approval of the agenda. Board members, do you have any requests for additions, revisions to the agenda? If so, please raise your hand. Nope. Uh, seeing no request, I would like a vote of the board to proceed with approval of the agenda as submitted. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, uh, aye mm. for me also. Uh, and since everyone said aye, we don't need to hear the nays. Uh, next is the disclosure by board members of site visits and ex parte contact for items on today's agenda. Uh, board member Carlson? Uh, none, no. Uh, board member Hill? None. Uh, board member Younger is excused. Uh, Vice Chair Sai? No, I've not been there. Uh, and myself, uh, the first uh, site on today's agenda is uh, sort of one street over from me, so I'll have to recuse myself from that one. But I have not visited the other one. Uh, public comment. Next is public comment for general items that are not on the agenda. Has staff received any public comment in person or via Zoom? We do not have any or we have not received any public comments in chambers. Um, guest on Zoom, please click the hand icon to make a public comment. And we do not have any public comments via Zoom. All right, so uh, this is the point at which I think I have to recuse myself for this item, and then so I'll pass this along to Vice Chair Sai. Oh, I... oh, sorry. I didn't oh, see that. Update. Did I jump? On the top. Where it says um, page three, updates from City Manager. Oh, okay, cool. Thank you. Just go ahead and announce it. Uh, updates from the city manager's office. Uh, Deputy City Manager Dominica uh, Megger. Megger Dietian. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Chair. Good evening, Commissioners. Dominica Megger Dietian with the city manager's office. I'm making my tour of our commissions and boards, providing updates from across the agency, and hopefully answering any questions you may have of the city manager's office. Thank you for accommodating me on your agenda tonight. As you may have heard, the last 12 to 18 months have been very busy and productive at the city. The city manager's office is working with each department to conduct organizational assessments. These assessments analyze staffing, workflows, resources, policy review, as well as industry best practices and present actionable recommendations for improvements for the city council and city manager to employ. We have completed the public works, finance, community services assessments, and have a few underway. We've also completed a library strategic plan. The police department assessment is underway and is notable because it has a significant community input uh, opportunity and engagement opportunities are forthcoming. So please keep apprised of that. We have returned our programmings and events and look forward to a busy summer ahead with music, movies, summer camp, 4th of July and more. In the finance department, we've delivered timely budget documents to the Finance Commission and to the City Council, a timely annual audit, a mid-year budget report in March, and we are now providing monthly budget updates as of this week at City Council, and we're deep within budget season. While we have closed our online community input survey on the budget just a few days ago, we have a number of in-person and virtual input opportunities upcoming. Budget input sessions on May 16th at the Finance Commission, May 18th in the morning and evening for community input with staff, and a budget workshop with the City Council on May 24th. We wanna hear from you, our commissioners, our residents and our businesses on budget priorities as we develop a strong document for the year ahead. 
Speaking about priorities, we are implementing the city's 2021-26 strategic plan and have completed more than 50% of the priorities set forth by the community and the city council. As you know, we have a new city councilwoman who is actually your council liaison, Janet Braun, as well as a new city treasurer, Jen Tao, and feel like this is a good opportunity for us to revisit the strategic plan and make sure that the priorities are still as they were when we set forth this document in fall of 2021. In fall of this year, we'll be having community engagement and a council study session on the strategic plan to revisit those priorities. The Caltrans homes are a major project as we have 68 properties in our jurisdiction that are in the process of being disposed by the state. You may know that the city council has directed staff to complete inspections on these properties as well as financial pro formas. And we await the policy decisions that the city has to make. The city has first right of refusal on the vacant and historical properties and tenants of the Caltrans properties also have an opportunity first right of refusal so long as they uh, meet the requirements to purchase their homes from the state. The City Council has approved a City Hall electrification project, which builds electric charging infrastructure and solar power at City Hall, as well as transitions the police fleet to electric vehicles, which is underway. The project's in progress and we keep the community and council apprised with quarterly updates, and we will have a press conference and press release coming in the next few weeks. The city's developed a number of documents that are available on the city website as well as on our new mobile app, SouthPass Mobile, which is available for Apple and Android products that provides all of the information of the website at your fingertips, but also goes one step further in helping to identify your district, your district leaders, resources, as well as requests for service at your fingertips. Uh, one thing that I'd like to highlight, if you haven't already explored and downloaded SouthPass Mobile, is it has the opportunity of geotagging so if there's something that you see in the, in the community that you'd like staff to follow up on, go ahead and use your app, take a photo, and it sends it to the appropriate staff members uh, with the actual uh, uh, location of the downed tree or uh, trash or anything else that might be needing some uh, assistance. We've developed a quarterly newsletter which highlights major developments and projects across the community. We have a social services resource guide out now that identifies partner agencies and resources available to our community. While the city of South Pasadena is not a direct uh, provider of social services, there's a number of agencies and partner agencies that do touch our community and provide resources to our community. And our hope in developing that document is that in engaging with our community, it also helps us to identify any gaps in service so that staff may pursue further uh, partnerships and be able to leverage further resources on behalf of our community. We also have a new resource guide out for elder adults, which identifies resources and programming for our senior population, as well as their caretakers. We've established an economic development team in the city manager's office that focuses on business assistance, attraction, site selection, and more. Our guide to doing business has launched and it's a resource for existing South Pasadena businesses, businesses that might be looking to move or expand or have a new business idea, and is also a resource for anyone who's looking to invest in South Pasadena and start a new business. We're currently soliciting proposals for a new city website and look to develop an inviting user-friendly site that's a proud representation of our community and our agency. And we're in progress with the city council and a city council subcommittee in a, a city attorney services new contract. We do anticipate a new contract being awarded June 7th or June 21st um, and have uh, gone through a number of bids and, and proposals that we've received and finalized our interviews just this week. Specifically in the community development department, we've caught up on our backlog and the case log with every application in progress with a planning staff member. We submitted a revised draft of the housing element to the state for their review and anticipate certification and adoption in the coming weeks. Thereafter, we'll be work on implementing the zoning and programmatic next steps to implementation of the housing element. We're working closely with our team in public works and planning to roll out what you might have heard of the Slow Streets Project 
which brings elements to the commercial and residential areas near, near, near our downtown on mission to make the areas more beautiful, welcoming, pedestrian friendly, traffic calming, and also to maximize our outdoor business opportunities. You might readily recognize this as the temporary outdoor dining areas along mission, and we'll be engaging with community members ahead of transitioning any of the temporary parklets to permanent parklets, as well as some of the other programmatic things that are involved with that project. And finally, we're working on finalizing key documents such as the general plan and the downtown specific plan. The city council and various commissions have recently held study sessions on priority areas such as streets and infrastructure, library strategic planning and site planning, and housing. We look forward to seeing you all at the upcoming Commissioner Congress on June 28, where we recognize our appointed officials, service to the community, applaud the accomplishments of this year, and look forward to work plans being developed for the year ahead. That completes my updates to you tonight, and I'm available if you have any questions. Does anyone have any questions? No questions. No questions. No. No questions here either. Uh, thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thank you for having me. Um, so I guess next we move on to the public hearing of 1222 uh, Brunswick Avenue, which then I will introduce myself. Um, staff, do we have a presentation? Uh, thank you, uh, board member. Um, I believe it was Sai that, that just spoke. Um, yes, uh, my name is Braulio Madrid. I am an associate planner here for the wonderful city of South Pasadena. Uh, and tonight I have the pleasure of presenting to you uh, project number 2451 for a design review permit located at 1222 Brunswick Avenue. The subject site is a rectangular shaped lot located on the east side of Brunswick Avenue, south of Monterey Road. The lot measures approximately 7,418 square feet and is bounded by residential to the north, south, east, and west. The site is currently developed with a single family dwelling and an attached garage. The slide before you shows the street view of the residence, which was built in 1954. And here we have pictures of the existing site from the, of the rear yard and the back of the structure. Next, we'll be discussing a little bit about the project background. The project was presented before the Cultural Heritage Commission during the regularly scheduled December 15, 2022 meeting. Pursuant to the city's historic ordinance, any structures over 45 years of age that propose a demolition and is not a cultural resource requires the preparation of an intensive level historic resource evaluation or HRE. The HRE was prepared by a city selected consultant that after analyzing the property determined that the property was not deemed was deemed ineligible for designation as a City of South Pasadena landmark. The CHC determined that the property does not meet the national, state, or local criteria for historic designation, and the project may proceed through the city's application process for the design review of the uh, newly proposed home. As mentioned in the beginning, the applicant is requesting a design review permit for the construction of a brand new 2,401 square foot single family residence. The property is located within the residential single family, also known as the RS zone, and is developed with a 1,260 square foot dwelling and an attached garage. The property has undergone minor work that includes, but is not limited to, plumbing, electrical, re-roofing, facade, and interior remodel.
The existing residence is currently a one-story single family dwelling with an attached garage. The application, the application proposes a full demolition of all the structures on site. The proposed project, the project proposes to construct a new single family dwelling a 1,060 square foot basement, a 320 front balcony over the garage, a 386 square foot rear balcony, and an attached two car garage. In addition, the project is proposing to construct a new pool and spa and remove two existing trees from the site. The project also proposes other site improvements such as new landscaping, new retaining walls, new lighting, a new driveway, and a new walkway. Overall, the project complies with all the development standards for the RS zone and the zone South Pasadena design guidelines for new, for new dwellings. Lastly, the proposed ADU on the plans will be reviewed and approved administratively after the public, after the design review permit has been approved. Next, we'll be going over the project analysis. The project complies with the design guidelines to orient the front of the new home towards the street, taking consideration the building placement, garage and home setbacks, as well as consideration of the scale and massing of the existing homes of the neighborhood. Here you can see a color rendering of the front facade. The proposed project the project is proposing to use corrugated metal panels, standing steam metal siding, concrete masonry, Portland cement plaster, glass railings, and a cast in place concrete, consistent with modern architectural styles. The contemporary style uses various exterior finishes and wall offsets at the front and rear to reduce the massing of the proposal. Materials and massing can be referenced in the development plans as well as the 3D renderings. The property also proposes several retaining walls not to exceed six feet in height and required fencing. The residence is located within, a within an established single family neighborhood that contains houses of various architectural styles. The neighborhood has one example of a modern styled home located at 1327 Brunswick Avenue. The proposed residence is consistent with other houses in the neighborhood in terms of the scale and placement of the building and maintaining a large front, front yard setback. Here we have the demolition plan and the existing site plan. In Orange is the building, and in red are the two existing trees that will be removed as part of the project. Next, we will see the outline of the proposed buildings uh, through this site plan. Now we will be going over the floor plans. Here we have the lower level floor plan, which contains access to the two car garage, three bedrooms, two bathrooms, a living room, and a staircase to the upper level. The first floor contains the main entry. I'm sorry, this main floor contains the main entry, the access staircase below and above, a master bedroom with a master bathroom and closet, living room, a kitchen, and the rear balcony. And lastly, the top level contains the access staircase that leads you to the proposed balcony above the garage. Next, we'll be looking at the proposed elevations, starting with the front. As mentioned here, we can see the different various elements that are being proposed, as well as the balcony above the garage. The glass railings are proposed as part of that balcony.
This elevation shows shows that the balcony is not surpassing the maximum height of the building. The various use of the exterior materials as well as the variety variety in the wall planes helps alleviate a large massing. Next, we have the south elevation, which is also the side yards elevation. And lastly, we will be looking at the rear elevation where you'll be able to see the second story balcony uh, that leads from the living room and kitchen as well as the two bedrooms with access to the backyard at the lower level. The applicant has provided us with renderings that can also be found as part of the development plans. The top rendering is an illustration of the rear of the primary home, while the bottom rendering is of the interior of the main level, which would be the kitchen and dining room leading to the balcony. As part of the project, the applicant will be removing two persimmon trees. As conditioned by the Public Works Department, the tree removal will require a separate submittal and review process by their department. It is worth to be noted that the tree to the south of the property, the right picture, has been severely damaged by the recent storms. The recommendation this evening for the Design Review Board is to find the project exempt from CEQA and approve the project subject to the conditions of approval. This concludes staff's presentation. We have the applicants here in person ready to answer any questions. They do not have a presentation, but staff is also here to assist with any questions you may have. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Does anyone have any questions for staff? No. No. I do have one question. Um, it's in regards to the total FAR in the basement. Um, I noticed the basement is huge. It's a thousand, it's over a thousand square feet. Is that counted towards the FAR? It is not. Uh, the way that the floor area ratio is defined in our municipal code is that any uh, floor area that is subterranean and not above ground level does not count towards the floor area ratio. Okay, great. Thank you. No problem. Um, is that all your questions? Yes, that's okay. it. Thanks. So, Mike, I have a couple questions. Um, is, is this property considered hillside? It is not. It is uh, not. Based on the calculations, the uh, property does not exceed the 20% uh, slope requirement to be considered a hillside. Okay. Uh, if I recall correctly, I believe it's a 14%. Okay. 13%. Okay. Yes. Um, I, I also have a, my, that's a follow-up question. I, because it's not a hillside, from what I recall, the maximum width of a driveway for a single family residence is 12 feet. And then I believe within the front setback, you're allowed 30% to be hardscape. So from my calculation, that's slightly over 30%. Is that, is there an exception to that here? Uh, thank you for noting that. Uh, we have not received a final landscape plan that will be part of the uh, plan check process. And then during that landscape plan, we would uh, make sure that uh, we are in compliance with the required um, uh, landscaping uh, area. Um, however, um, we could amend a condition of approval so that we can make sure that uh, this, this standard is met during the final process. Okay, got it. Um, I think that's all the questions I have for staff. And so the applicant doesn't have a presentation. So does anyone have questions for the applicant? I do. Okay. A couple of quick questions. Who is the applicant? This, I'm sorry. The, um, what's the material around the garage? The material around the garage. I can't. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm not familiar with that. Uh, concrete masonry uh, units. Okay. Those are basically like a eight inch by sixteen blocks. Um, they either 
stack them or do a running bond. But in this case, we are doing a stack bond. I see. Yeah, so okay. it's kind of like a brick, but it's not. It's like a, it's, a concrete tile. Yeah, yeah it's a concrete masonry. Okay, product. and is the color this bluish that's in the rendering, or is it more a natural color? Yeah, it's more like a natural color. Um, in the, right in the rendering, we picked like a more bluish color, um, just to so that it complement with the other siding a little bit better. Okay. So, and uh, that sounds fine. That's that's great. Thank my you. my other question was with respect to the um, the address street address numbers. They they are quite large. What's with their it, it almost feels like a, a retail <laughs> building or a restaurant. We could definitely look at that. And, and we part, part of the requirement, of course, is to have the fire department identify your, your street address. And, and the rendering shows is if, it's feel, if the commissions feel that it's a little bit large, we can definitely go back and, and, and we adjust the size and all that. I mean, it's it's not a, a big issue, but it just feels like it's it's a very strong visual. Element. I, I hear you. the house is so nice looking. It's it seems a shame to distract from it. I hear you. Thank you. <laughs> that's that's all my my questions. Okay. Thank you. I'm sorry. Oh, uh, my name is Yuok Lo with YNL Architects. I'm the architect uh, for this project. Commissioner Hill, do you have any questions? Um, just one. The balcony here that we're actually seeing in this rendering above the parking garage. Um, I guess I'm curious, is that, are there views out looking out? Like why was it chosen to put in this location? Cause it's actually a lower roof level. So I'm just kind of trying to understand the Uh, so it does have views outward. Um, my uncle lives two houses up, and he has a similar uh, patio facing the same direction, and he's able to see the fireworks from the Rose Bowl and you know all, all kinds of other things. So we wanted something there we can look out that way also. There's nothing blocking our view that way. So. Okay, great. Thank you. Yes, Daryl Roberts, owner. Thanks. That's my only question. Okay. Um, I have a couple of questions. So my first question is, um, I don't think it's noted on the plans, but it looks like steel, but I was just curious what the fascia material is. The fascia material on the front is, um, is yeah, it's going to be metal. Uh, it's the metal. Yeah. Is it like steel or is it like sheet metal? Sheet metal. Yeah. So it's, it's wrapped to look like an I-beam. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And so my second question is, what is the roofing material? Because it doesn't note that on the plans either. So right now, yeah, I'm, I'm glad that you brought it up. Um, we, we're debating between the single ply or the traditional uh, bitumen okay. buildup. Okay. But um, uh, as you're aware, um, there's a minimum SRI index that we have to follow. So whatever we pick would have to meet that. Mm -hmm. I, I'm just curious because I noticed there's no parapet, especially on the lower level where the garage is. So I'm just curious how that sheet metal meets that membrane that roofing and how that comes together. I, I was really. Yeah, when we develop the contract document, we'll make mm -hmm. sure that we detail that. Yeah. Okay. And I'm just curious because then, like, because um, this the street is uphill. So the houses above can see the roof. Um, you, you know, so I'm just worried, like how the, if it doesn't come together nicely, it, you know, you'll see that for sure. Um, yeah. Another thing that we could potentially consider is if we, if we do, uh, end up with build up roofing, we could potentially mm -hmm. put gravels. Okay. So that it doesn't yeah. look as bad as the, yeah. the white stop or whatever you call yeah. it. Yeah. I, I think I would like that. The gravel is nice on the flat roofs and that kind of. It, there's a lot of homes mid-century with flat roofs that have that. So I do like that gravel look more than the membrane. Um, so my next question is, um, I noticed like that there's a lot of hardscape. I know the site is not very big um, and with the ADU, but, um, and the property does slope back towards 
the, the backyard of the neighbor. What do you plan to do with all the rain? I know that's like lid and everything, but I'm just curious for my. Yeah, that's a good question. Mm -hmm. Actually, we, we had a lengthy discussion with the civil engineer. So you're right, basically it's sloped that way. So we're gonna have a trench string mm -hmm. towards the end of the, the slope behind the ADU mm -hmm. to capture all the water. And then are you gonna have a sump pump to pump it back towards the street? Unfortunately, we have to because it's lower than the, uh, than the elevation of the okay. street, so. Yeah, I'm glad that you thought about that because I, I would not want to be the neighbor with all that rain coming down. Into no, we, we, we will not do that. Okay. Um, so I think that that there's a second part to my question. I noticed all the, all the roofs are have a drain in the middle of the roof. Um, and then in this section, the it doesn't look like there's a lot of like Base where the drain can like get to the so what I, I'm just curious what the plan is with where the rain drain where is it going to come out so the the idea is and again we we haven't gone into the CD yet yeah. so the idea is to have the joys going this way and then have the drain going parallel to the joy uh -huh. coming back to the building and then and then drain it underground Okay, and drain it, I guess, towards the back of the site to have it sump pumped out yeah, again. Yeah. So all the rain will be going towards the back. Right. And then being pumped back out. Right, exactly, because at that point, it's much lower than the front. Got it. Okay. Um, and then my last question is, I know usually planning asks for it, but where is the location of the HVAC units going to be? And I know there's like the pool equipment area, but I don't see the HVAC on the site plan. Um, yeah, go ahead. So here we have the uh, tentative landscape plan. Mm -hmm. uh, to the rear, you'll be able to see the illustration that's titled ADU and mm -hmm. right underneath the ADU, there's gonna be two enclosures outside of the side yard setback, which will keep the uh, mechanical equipment. Okay, got it. Okay. Yeah, I noticed on the plans it was labeled pool equipment, but I didn't see it, the AC unit labeled. Okay. Yeah, so, so we have two enclosure, and one okay. is for the pool and the other one is for the uh, equipment. Got it. Okay, thank you. Um, those are all my questions. Thank you so much. Oh, wait, actually, actually no, it's fine. I, I, that's all my okay. questions. Yeah. Thank can you. I, can I ask one more question? Actually, this is for staff. I know, sorry, I'm going backwards mm -hmm. really quickly for the ADU um, and the square footage is our ordinance a requirement that over 800 square feet that starts counting towards FAR. Yes, that is correct. And how I did the calcs really quick. This is over 800 square feet, right? Yes. There's an excess of 123 square feet. Okay. Still keeping but it's still shown in the, in the, that's accounted for in the FAR, right? In the um, total calculation here. Yes, from what okay. my recollection of, of doing the math, uh, that was included. Okay, I just want to check. It didn't clarify, so I wanted to make sure that the FAR included that 34%, that it included the extra ADU. Okay, perfect. That is Thank correct. you. Okay, nice. Okay. Um, I will now open the public hearing. Staff, are there any public comments for this item? We do not have any um, public comments in chambers. Attendees participating on Zoom, please click the hand icon to make a public comment on item number three. And we do not have any um, uh, public comments via Zoom. Okay, we will now close the public comments and have discussion amongst the board. Would anyone like to begin the discussion? <laughs> I, I I think it's an attractive house. I I don't have any issues with it really. Mm -hmm. Um, I, the only thing that kind of puts me off of, about this rendering is that blue concrete. Mm -hmm. But it's but it's not going to be blue, I guess. Yeah, if it, it's natural CMU block, it's usually gray. I think that yeah, yeah yeah it's like a gray, it's like a light. And uh, but um, yeah, I've I've got I think it's very nice looking. So it's interesting you bring up that because on the other side, if you, so my, my, my only bit, I do really appreciate the design and the style and I like it's articulated really well with all the 
materials. Um, but my only bit is actually the south elevation um, towards the front. I, I did look, I didn't drive by the site, but I did look at it from Google Streets. If you're driving down the street from uphill down, um, you do see the it's south elevation. Prominent. Yeah, and that is a really large concrete wall on the south can elevation. You, can you bring up the south elevation? Is that possible? Can I address that? Uh huh. Yeah, so um, the reason why we had a big concrete wall on the south side, one is for the, for the look, really, and then the thermal, thermal um, uh, value. Um, we recently did a house in, in Redondo Beach, um, which has the same element, kind of like an like a anchor point of mm -hmm. the entire house. So it's not going to be finished with regular plywood that you're going to see it very, um, like very rough and all that. So we, our intent is to have the, the highest grade plywood that you can finish with the whole yeah. kind of complement with the language of a contemporary right. design. Uh, structural honesty was 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 one of the big elements when we think about this. Yeah, I, 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 it's not the concrete that I have a problem with. It's just that it's a blank concrete wall and it's towards the front. If like if the blank wall was like towards the back, if if the back of the house and the front of the house were flipped, I think I would really I would like that hmm. more because when you're driving down the street, you're not just looking at this huge concrete wall you see a few fenestrations in it which um i think the neighbor would appreciate as well because if you look at it from google streets um but there's I, a, like, there's only a fence there and the fence on the plan say it's remaining so um but the reason why we put that wall on that side is because that side is actually higher so so it it kind of sloped this way and this way as well, so that's why we decided to right see this because portion right. I, I understand. Yeah. I understand. Um, and I mean, I I just went back to the design guidelines in new homes on page seventy one. It does say to avoid large blank walls. Um, so the, I I mean, this is just going back to the South Pasadena design guidelines. And so this is something that I, I mean, I, I do like design and overall composition. I don't mind it. I just, you know, we're here as a board and I'm also going back through our guidelines to review the guidelines when I review these drawings. And that's something that I noticed on the elevation. So that's just something I wanted to bring up in conversation for conversation. Would, would it be make any sense to break up that concrete with one of the other materials at least a, a or section like, of it or like a window you know maybe window. i don't know it, it doesn't have to be a material change i do i do like the concrete um i, I do too i have, for me it's a little bit it's it's tough because i do agree with the design guidelines when they say they don't want large swaths of mm -hmm. blank walls there are i'd say with the material i mean i'm just looking at the material palette that was submitted here and with that kind of concrete and that high level of finish, I think it actually would be kind of beautiful in some ways, depending on, I mean, if it's really done at, at a, you know, it depends on the actual, the output. And if it actually ends up being a really beautiful finish, I actually wouldn't mind it. And there are some windows on it that do break it up. And to be honest, my actually, my comment was going to be that I find that there's actually too, a little bit too much materials. It is beautifully designed and I like the massing, but I feel like there's actually a lot going on on a lot of the facades. So I actually appreciate this one as being a little bit of a sim simplistic, a little bit more simple. Um, Cause it is going for a contemporary look. Yeah. So I do, I, I do understand the point though. It yeah. does, you know, and the guidelines are, do specifically say no blank walls, you know, no it, it just says avoid it. Yeah. And so I'm just bringing that up to, yeah. For discussion. Um, Can but I ask a question about this? This the concrete on this wall. Is it? It's the formed concrete that has the holes the in holes it. In it. What's yeah. the how, how? What's the dimension of those holes? How how many are there per panel? Yeah. So it will it will. And we are not in design yet. I mean, in CD, yes, but um, it will be depending on. It will come back from the structural actually uh, to determine how how to tie the form. 
they could be two foot on center or four foot on center. I, I can't I can't really tell right now. But but that is kind of the idea that you will have not only the right. the tie hole but also the joint. Mm -hmm. So to to break it up, and then we do have some windows in there. And um, you you said that the forms you're using for that is going to be a, a, a special grade of plywood. Yeah, it's going to be the smooth one. You know, typical plywood you will have grains grains yeah. on it, but the one that we are intending to use would have a would have a um a finish to I it. See. Yeah. Although some people might like to have the rough finish yeah, on seen, it too, so it. Yeah. I've seen it where they use very heavily textured forms. So we could potentially investigate and do that as well. I mean, um, I, I mean, it, it was just to bring up conversation to sure. discuss because I did look at the Google Street Maps coming down that street, mm -hmm. so you will see that there is no like I think the rendering shows a lot of trees there, but there aren't any. Um, is there any plan for any? Uh, uh, landscaping the, yeah the, the entire landscaping on the front and the back will be will be it'll be it, but it's gravel right where that wall is along that setback right it looks like it's like yeah uh, there's no like, landscaping plan yeah, there's on no that side. there's no there's no landscaping in front of that wall but no like vines or no vines. it's it's like gravel and then the existing wood fence which is not very pretty but we could <laughs> we could plan um could plant something yeah, yeah i think that would be that would totally change the look of it mm -hmm. um I think that would be that would definitely helpful. help yeah the other thing i didn't i don't necessarily want to recommend this because it depends on how well it's done but you know you could also do like a stain or a color to it to make it but then you're drawing more attention and it's it is a pretty large facade that's that does have the feeling of being i hate to use the word blank but it does have that feeling which i'm i'm actually okay with when it's done well and it seems like based on the material selection and just kind of the overall layout it does seem like it's 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 designed well, and but. it's not the first time we've done it. We're, we've done it at other uh, places, yeah. and it turns out pretty nice. I think providing an example of previously where they've done it in the past might be helpful because then we could see it and say, "Oh, this is exactly what we're thinking." Yeah, you know, you we see it. There's no rendering of it or anything, so we we're just kind right. of making some. I, I think it would be helpful too if we saw like a rendering of that view because. It's such a contrast from the other view where there's like, like you mentioned, there's a lot of different materials and this wall is just one blank wall. And you do see it coming down the hill mm -hmm. on um, Brunswick from a from like Google Streets. So I, I was just. And I, I do want to mention it too, that it's as you drive along, you don't, you don't see the wall like 90 degrees towards it. You, always, you are seeing it always at an angle with the other elements of the house altogether. So you would never just see the wall. You would always see all these other things combined together. So mm -hmm. it, in a sense, it is complementing with each other. If, if it is just like a concrete block, I completely yeah. agree and, and it will be very ugly. But the reason why we chose that language is to, yeah. to have, achieve some kind of like a balance. Because we want, like um, this board member mentioned, we don't want to be all the sub like all everywhere. I mean, we want to have an anchor point for the for the house, and then everything kind of go around it. I, I mean, I have no problem with the concrete wall. I just feel like it's it's like I feel like this there it's like this you have a neighbor on that side, and mm -hmm. he, they're gonna be looking at like a twelve foot by twenty. I don't know. So what what if we um like that window A, what if we do metal top and bottom, kind of break up the concrete into two pieces? Would that would that be acceptable? I I don't know if I fully understand, but you know, I'm I'm actually if you go to the R1.2, the rendering with the pool in the back, it's the perspective that one right there up in the yeah up in the left hand corner there yeah. that's the other side of the concrete wall right we're looking right. at towards the left hand side mm -hmm. yeah and so what's beautiful about this is you've got the juxtaposition of the materials you've got mm -hmm. that metal steel look i almost wonder if you were to like wrap that around the side of the how of the concrete wall just even something as simple as that metal like a metal piece cutting through the concrete if that would you know we're trying 
we like to consider economics here. So we don't want to add a lot of costs to it, but is there like a simple way that you can break it up by introducing some of the materials that you already have here at the back and bringing them to that side? Or maybe we could do like, go back to that window. Uh, we can do metal. So basically, I think, yeah, I, I think I'm understanding that recommendation that it's, you're kind of breaking it into kind of, I'd like, say, you would groups, have two vertical groups. And then, uh, and then another a metal strip in the middle. I don't know, for me, the fact that it's such a horizontal wall, because it's so, it's much longer than it is tall. I want it to kind of break up in a different way than just kind of, if we're if we're talking about breaking up and introducing new materials, I'd want I'd say study it more and look at or or even like bring near the front, bring the concrete down and have that metal wrap around like yeah. just the corner. So like you get the hint of it come on the south side, you know. I know you're not never gonna look at the elevation straight on, but from the corner, I just feel like it's like you're putting a hand up, you know, to your, the neighbor, like, I don't want to look at you. Like, I don't know. It, it just feels very like, like the neighbor has this one big giant concrete wall. And I, I'm just, it's only one neighbor, but I feel like that's not what I want next to my house. Yeah, like I'm just mm -hmm. thinking for that neighbor. Like, I don't want a big giant concrete Yeah, it's wall a fair, house. it's a, it's a very good point. Right. Um, I mean, you want privacy. I mean, in South Pasadena, most of us live on lots that are very close to our neighbors. So you do want privacy, but you also don't want to be looking at a, you know, right. full like, concrete blank wall. So some, yeah. some, something, a penetration, more, something. Yeah. A little more balance. Like it, 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 I know it's, it's, it's beautiful how the house, if it was standalone in like the middle of the woods, I think but you also have a neighbor that's like 10 feet away. So I, I'm just trying to be considerate and thinking about it from a neighbor's perspective. Do I want like, um, like a 12 foot by, and how, how big of a- I, I believe the neighbor's house is actually further forward, closer towards the, the street. So the rear of that house is not really like just looking at the wall. It's sort of towards the middle part of the house. Mm -hmm. The site plan looks like it's lined up. Let's see. I looked at that too. Because right now, the way the house is, it's a big just concrete wall, or a big wall we're looking at right now. The, on the site plan, it looks like it's lined up with the house. Not exactly, but it's is this, I mean, I'm trying to get a sense of where we're, here's the property. That's one, that's 1220, that's because so this, this is north, that's south then. South is uphill. South is uphill. So yeah. then this is the neighbor we're talking about. So it is, I mean, they do look in. I think that house is also a little taller. Too, but... It would be helpful to have an elevation seeing the neighbor's property next to the house, just to kind of understand the relationship to it, because that is a, a pretty large swath of blank facade. Right, and it, but is the neighbor's house single story or is it two story? Okay. I mean, it's, 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 it's a single story, but they, you know, as you're in the driveway, go like this, and then the house goes down. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know mm -hmm. if it's a basement or if it's a second unit, so I don't know if it is two stories or not. But just like how this house was, it's one story right here, then it drops down as the uh, the driveway goes, the slopes down. Okay. So it's a similar thing for them too. So it's going to be all one height for the neighbor's house but it starts higher up than 1222. So everybody's okay. able to see over everybody's Right, house. I understand. So
so they can see just fine. But their their <laughs> windows will be lined up basically with the second floor. second floor. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, well, well, the way the roof is now on the house, it's uh, it's not a flat roof, and they see they can see over the house fine or through it or past it. And this is going to be a flat roof, which will probably give them a little bit more visibility. I know it maybe doesn't look like that on that rendering, but yeah, because the rendering looks like it's like it's taller. right right yeah. here, eye level. Yeah, but we all know that it's on an uphill and everything is a little higher as you go up. Also the site photo. It, There's no views looking that way. Yeah. I mean, I'm looking at the one site photo that was provided and it's not uh, that, that property, it, the property to the south is not that much in terms of elevations. Is it possible to pull up the Google street? Yeah, view? that may be helpful. Yeah. Hello, uh, members of the board. Okay, so, um, so we are limited in accessing internet during oh, this okay, public got it. hearing. Okay, that's um, however, I do want to quickly jump in and, and, and um, guide guide the members here on on the conversation that we're mm -hmm. having. So it seems like uh, the south wall is probably one of the biggest issues that we're discussing in regards to its massing and its style, um, as well as some of the proposed landscaping at the front. Uh, Something that can be considered uh, for tonight's project is having the applicant through a chair review uh, submit the requested elevations or renderings to help visualize how the new uh, building will interact with the rest of the neighborhood. Um, and if through that chair review, uh, the chairperson decides that uh, maybe this needs a little bit more work or more art architectural design, then the chair can work with the applicant so that they can have um, a middle ground between. What they're proposing and what would be desirable for the community if that's something that you'd like to consider um, and weigh in versus uh unfortunately not having access to the internet okay. in, in this case oh did you great in this case would it be a vice the vice chair would be reviewing because the chair yeah. if if we selected a chair review vice chair will review correct okay Correct. And in fact, uh, through the chair review process, uh, you can actually select any of the members here to to finalize the review. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you. So that's the subject property, right? Yeah. And then up. I think. The hell is this? Yeah. Let's... Oh, um, if you just turn a little more towards the left so we could see the south side of that house. So, yeah, so that's the view. Mm -hmm. so as, as you can see, the, um, the neighboring house is mm -hmm. further forward. Mm -hmm. um, the views are out. Uh, let's see. The views are, are out that direction. Um, and the house, the existing house right now is more long. It's not, mm -hmm. you know, taking up the, the, the width of the lot. Um, so they'll still have ample. So because the drive, the neighbor's driveway is actually on the north side, you do see a lot of the south elevation because mm -hmm. it's so open. Well, now I'm actually in looking at this Google Earth view. And when we had spun it around previously, I'm even thinking about the neighbor above them and they're going to be looking into a blank wall. Like you can just yeah. see it because it's actually not that steep. It, it, yeah. So that other neighbor right above them too will yeah. also be looking in there. I see their windows. So they are going to see that wall. Mm -hmm. It's definitely yeah. going to be visible to both the neighbors above, yeah. possibly three of the neighbors above. And then you know, to your point about the driveway being there, it is visible from the street. So it's a good... It's a good point. I'm still not opposed to the mm -hmm. the wall, mm -hmm. but I do think landscaping yeah. and maybe breaking up with some simple element, like it doesn't have to be over the top, but mm -hmm. something, right? Yeah. That breaks up I, a little I bit. Agree. Yeah, I, I, and, I, I'm not opposed to the concrete either and the wall. 
I just feel like I think the emptiness of it is what we need to address. Additionally, I would say it's it's more attractive than the existing wall. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. For sure. I agree. I agree for, for sure. sure. Yes. Yes. <laughs> That is true. I mean, the overall point is it's, I, I want to say, I think it's a great design. Yeah. I think it's a beautiful house. I think it's going to be a huge improvement and I'm happy that, that it's going into this location. I think this is just more of recommendations. So I'm happy to actually move it forward with a chair review. I don't know how everybody else feels about that. Um, with the addition, the, the architect mentioned some possible changes around that window or something like that. I think it would be nice to see that in a rendering what you'd be proposing to to just give it a little bit more interest. Yeah. And if you guys prefer, um, you can actually pull it up on the internet to see what that wall, um, what one of our previous projects, we actually did it and we have a uh, pictures of what 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 it looks like if if that's something that's possible. I'm, do you want to check out a, a previous example? It yeah. sounds like. Is that, yeah, like a website to show, because we have, like I said, we have done this kind of wall before. And if you guys want to see us that, that as no, an example. I, I think I know what the, I mean, I mean, I know what the wall will look like. I just want to see it actually. I would like a, to see it rendered like with that street view. You know, okay. um, I think that would be more helpful. Mm -hmm. yeah. But I think that it probably could be solved through a chair review, right? Instead of continuing I'm, it, what do you think? What I'm you guys fine think? with that, uh, unless you guys want to see it again. Uh, I think if if you do the chair review, but you feel that it should come back before the whole group, can we? Can we, we make that decision? I don't think we I, can. We, we do that if that. we do a chair review, and then the chair decides that they would like the rest of the group to review. Is that possible? Um, unfortunately, no. The, the chair okay. review would be to either yeah. approve then the project I'm now. The second option would be a subcommittee, uh, which would then have to be uh, returned to the public hearing. Got it. I'm fine with the chair review. All right. Yeah, I'm fine. With I'm the okay with the chair review too. Keep the process moving. Oh, okay, got it. Okay. Okay. Yeah, yep. got it. I understand. All right. Yeah. Okay. We could do that. Okay. I'm I mean, I'm comfortable with that. I'm happy to make a motion if we're are we still discussing? No, I think. Yeah. I'm, yeah, if you know know what the motion is. <laughs> so I'm going to make a motion to not continued, not approved, but to move the project to a chair review and the chair will then um, review the project and approve, right? I don't know if that's the right motion. And I think we have to name some changes. This, like, what, Subject what to, okay, subject to specific changes. So I- Sorry, uh, I'm actually uh -huh. planning manager. Can you help here. us? So sorry to jump in here. So I think, um, since there's a public hearing, we need to make a decision. Uh, so I think if the board decides to approve this project, then we can do a chair review. However, if the board it's... feels uncomfortable, uh, of course, it can be continued to a next hearing or a form subcommittee. But I think the direction or the decision needs to be clear that approve it, not, not um, or okay. Okay. the chair. So it is approved. It is it's a board. Is a, a, a whole body decision is not a so it's technically can, approved with a chair review to refine the certain element of of example okay. of the elevation plans okay and, and that's what we're comfortable with okay so i'll try that again <laughs> so i'm going to make a motion to approve the project with a chair review and specifically addressing the south facade and the materials and fenestration um that's it Second that. Um, will staff please take roll call? Board member Carlson? Yes. Board member Hill? Yes. Vice Chair Sai? Yes. Motion carries. Can we invite the chair back in?
Okay. So I guess we're uh, now moving on to 1411 Oak Street. Um, staff, do we have a presentation? Uh, thank you, Chair, and welcome back. <laughs> Thanks. Just to reintroduce myself, as stated earlier, my name is Braulio Madrid. I'm the Associate Planner, one of the Associate Planners here in the City of South Pasadena. And the next project for your consideration is the project number 2531 design review for a project located on 1411 Oak Street. The subject site is a rectangular lot located on the south side of Oak Street between Fremont and Fair Oaks Avenue. The lot measures approximately 17,751 square feet and is bounded by residential to the north, south, east, and west. This, is currently this site is currently developed with a single family dwelling, an accessory dwelling unit, and a detached garage. The slide before you identifies a street view of the residence, which was built in 1918. And next we have an illustration, a picture of the rear of the existing home. The applicant is requesting a design review permit to add 1,358 square feet to the existing single family dwelling. The property is located within residential single family, also known as the RS zone, and is developed with a 2,751 square foot residence and a detached ADU and garage. The permit history on the record shows various building permits from interior remodels, re-roofing, installation of mechanical equipment, and electrical permits. However, per the applicant's project narrative, the property has had various unpermitted additions made in the early 1990s constructed by the previous owner. The unpermitted additions are located at the ground level and second floor. The existing home remains with no specific architectural style as it has been significantly modified from its original form. The applicant will be legalizing or demolishing any unpermitted work on the site. Next, we will move on to the project analysis. The existing residence is a two-story single family home with three major unpermitted additions. The project proposes to demolish and rebuild any unpermitted additions to be in compliance with the South Pasadena Municipal Code. The project is proposing to legalize a 265 square foot dining room, a 500 square foot addition to the west of the first floor, and 858 square feet on the second story. Additionally, the project proposes to attach a 370 square foot carport, a 720 square foot pool, and a 49 square foot spa. Additionally, a 300 square foot rear patio is also proposed with a full exterior facade remodel. In total, the property will have two covered parking spaces as required by code. Although the existing ADU is exempt from parking requirements, the applicant has proposed an additional uncovered parking space to accommodate the residents of the accessory dwelling unit. The forward plan of the primary home's first story proposes a one bedroom suite with a wet bar, one and a half bathrooms at the ground level, shared common area of a living room, family room, dining room, kitchen, and a music room, as well as access to the upstairs. The second floor will include a master suite with a private master bathroom and closet, three additional bedrooms, a loft area, a laundry, area, a laundry room, and the existing balcony facing Oak Street. In total, the new residence will measure 4,374 square feet 
and will remain a two-story structure. The proposed design proposes materials with finishes that are compatible with the surrounding neighborhood as it incorporates craftsman style architecture. A craftsman style home can be identified by some character defining features such as but not limited to its porches at the front are either full or partial width of the facade, porch roofs supported by columns, exposed rafter tails and facade treatments. The proposed project, the project proposes the use of asphalt shingles roofing material, hardy fiber cement shingle siding, and stone veneer for exterior finishes. All windows include decorative trim and a mix of wood and aluminum, aluminum clad. The concrete porch at the front facade will be renovated to include large stucco columns, normally seen in traditional craftsman styled homes. The next slide is of the existing of the existing development on the property. Here we have the existing floor plans of the first and second story. The demolition of the unpermitted additions will be highlighted in red, while the legalization of the existing dining room uh, is enclosed in blue. Next, we will see the proposed site plan that includes the existing garage ADU, as well as the proposed pool and spa, rear patio, and primary home. As described earlier, here we have the first floor, which includes that master suite and the common living space. To the left, you'll be able to see the carport uh, to meet the covered parking requirements. Next, we have the second floor. Towards the rear, you'll be able to identify the master suite. While towards the front, you'll be able to see the additional two bedrooms connecting uh, to the balcony. Next is the existing and the proposed roof plan. As you, may, as you can tell, there has been a huge improvement uh, from what was current, what is currently there to what is being proposed. We will now be moving on into the elevations, starting with the north elevation, which is also the front facing Oak Street. The illustration above shows the existing home, while the uh, while the illustration below uh, shows the proposed Craftsman home. Next, we'll see the east side yard elevation. In this elevation, you'll be able to notice the front and rear porch. And the south elevation, also the rear yard elevation. <laughs> Lastly, we'll be looking at the west side yard elevation, the front of the property, is located towards the right, while the rear porch is towards the left. The applicant has also provided 3D renderings of the project to best convey the new design of the home. And thus, staff recommends this evening to the Design Review Board to find the project exempt from CEQA and approve the project subject to the conditions of approval. This concludes my presentation. Staff is happy to answer any questions you may have. We also have the applicant here. Uh, although he does not have a presentation, he's here to answer any questions of the board. Thank you. Uh, does anyone have questions for staff? No. I, I had just have one question. Um, this is actually just for my own reference or knowledge. It doesn't have anything really to do with the project, but I noticed that um, the staff presentation FAR is 800 square feet less than the architect's max uh, calculation of the FAR. Is there a, does the ADU get an 800 square foot credit even when it's within F, 
under the F max FAR? So, so uh, the credits that were used for the uh, total uh -huh. um, would be the 800 square feet for the ADU and as well as um, up to 500 square feet for oh, a garage or carport. Okay. So is that apply for all properties now? Because I, kn I know it wasn't before, but is that something new? Yes, the exemption of the parking garage and exemptions for ADUs okay. uh, are standardized uh, regardless uh, of the zoning. Okay, because I knew that 800 was exempt when you're when you've gone over the max FAR. I didn't realize you were still exempt within, even if you're within the max FAR. So that's good to know. Because this is within, this is under the max FAR. So you you don't. So even if you are not maxed out, you can still get an 800 square yeah, foot. Yeah, they don't count it towards, 800 isn't counted at all towards oh, any FAR. Okay, that's good to know. I didn't know that. Thank you. <laughs> I learned something new. Thank you so much. That was like, any other questions? Um, no. Sorry. Thank you. And uh, you already mentioned the applicant doesn't have a presentation. Um, so does anyone have any questions for the applicant? I do not. No, none. Um, I have a question about the size of the house. I understand this is a very large lot, and um, we are we are well under the, the it's the proposed design is well under the maximum floor area ratio, but the house, especially in comparison to the existing structure that's there and the neighbors, seems massive so i'm just would like to kind of understand the approach behind that hello my name is patrick Serpiki. i'm the architect on the project um so there is uh, we did do as part of the package we do like the 500 foot radius there's actually four houses that are in the same range and a couple that are actually i think a little bit larger mm -hmm. so there is a prominent and then that this street also if you drove by there's a lot of big um apartment buildings across mm -hmm. the street so there's there's a mass to that street. So we actually played off of that. We tried to make this more, that's kind of with the craftsman style to kind of stretch out. <laughs> this is kind of, but that, the uh, the screen kind of squats it, but I don't know if you guys have the renderings on the screen, but so it's more of a long house. We kind of kept the low sloping to kind of play off that and not kind of create height and we're well underneath the height limitations on the property too. So it is a, a decent sized home. Um, we are only really, not really proposing more than it's actually there. We're just demoing what has been done over the years without, you know, without uh, proper approvals and permits. Okay, great, thank you. Yeah. And then I think that just to clarify with the ADU one, cause I, I'm pretty knowledgeable about it. And it's something recent that we actually, or if the ADU is built before an addition, you actually don't get that 800 foot credit. So it's like that's so we are well with under with it. So we could never come back and keep building and get the ADU credit. So there's it there is a, a a level when you do the ADU and when you do the main house. So that's that's, that's a little tricky. It's this is specifically in South yeah, that's, I think you might have that's to look what at I thought, but the staff presentation took the 800 off. So yeah, I think yeah, I think that it's but it, it technically, you're right. It's like we could never keep coming back. And right. And ask over. for yeah. the yeah. addition. Yeah. That's what so I we specifically, I, I think the history of the project is the previous owner is, um, is uh, passed away and his wife still lives on the property. The son is the new owner of the property. And he's, you know, very excited about kind of keeping his mom on the property. We've, we've recently or almost completing the ADU where we started some of these um, detailing that we're going to bring onto the front house. So mm -hmm. Um, that's about done. But the, the biggest thing was taking a, a home that does need some repair, but realistically trying to bring it up to building code, but most importantly, up to zoning code for the, for the property. And that's all I have. Great. Thank you. So uh, any other questions for the applicant? No, yeah, I don't have any questions either. Uh, I will now open up public hearing. Uh, staff, are there any public comments for this item? We do not have any public comments in chambers. Um, attendees par participating on Zoom, please click the hand icon to make a public comment on item number four. And we do not have any public comments via Zoom.
Uh, we will now close the public comments and have a discussion amongst the board. Uh, would someone like to begin the discussion? Uh, oh, you want to go? go ahead. Okay. Go ahead. Um, overall, I think the design, I think it's done well. Uh, you know, it's, it's very traditional in the neighborhood, the craftsman style. It seems to be articulated pretty well. I'm still, it's, it's hard for me to accept just the, this, it seems like a behemoth of a project of amassing. I'm looking at the existing and it's 2,700, just over 2,700 square feet. And the new one is 4,700, almost 4,700 square feet. So it's, it's 2000 square feet more. And I understand that they're allowed to do that, but then also looking at the maps where you've got the different square footages there are some other ones in the area that are approaching that. None of them based on this map are, besides multifamily or commercial lots, are, are broaching that or getting close to that, um, that size. There's a couple other ones, but I also think that they're longer on the lots. So that front facade doesn't just seem so big. It just, it's also hard to tell because in looking at the elevations, there's no, you don't see the neighboring property. So it's hard to tell the scale. So when it's isolated, you could kind of be like, well, maybe it's not that big, but I just get the sense that this is going to be gigantic on the lot. You know, I'm looking at one of its neighbors at 501 Oak and that's a tiny single one story home. And so I, I just, I'm a little concerned. Do we have a plan that shows the kind of the before the existing floor plan and the uh, the new floor plan? Thank you. Does the pr does the previous I mean, on the analysis, doesn't it, it? I don't think it counts the unpermitted square footage. Correct. You're saying in the original, is it, that would be a question? Yeah. For, so yeah. actually, the house is actually bigger in, in, in terms of existing because it has unpermitted square footage. That's not in the, in the calculation. Is that correct? That is correct. Yeah. Any unpermitted uh, right. additions? were not included as the right. existing square footage so, identified. So the addition is actually not as big because they're actually legalizing some of the existing house. Does that make sense? So it's not Well, what is that diff I guess yeah. what's the difference? Yeah. So I'm not talking about what's, you know, I guess the question really is like, are we talking about a 2000 square foot difference here? Or is it really a 1000 square foot different? 500 square foot difference between the actual existing structures versus the new. So the existing home, the legal portion of the existing home totals 2,751 square feet. Mm -hmm. The new addition is 1,358 square feet. Okay, so it's under 2,000. Correct. Um, the, I think the the, the small difference that you're that you're discussing right now is that of the uh, existing dining room, but there was illegal uh, renovations done in that area, which would now be legalized as part of this process. Got it. Okay. And that's part of the thirteen something. Is it possible to bring up the uh, front elevation, the comparison with the existing and the proposed? So I'm looking at it here in my book and the new structure is isn't that much bigger than the old one it's taller but you know can you see the proposed versus the existing i think it's the combination with for me it's also the carport and you know the addition wall itself is not that much larger. I just think that the facade itself of the massing looks 
it looks massive. I, I actually don't mind it because I think this area is like, I forgot what zone, is this a state? Is this a state or, or E RS. or RS? But it's near a lot of RE properties and a lot of like the houses on Mylan and in this area are actually quite, I, I mean, it's on the other side of Fair Oaks, but, um, but a lot of, you know, across then this general area has a lot of estate property and a lot of houses are quite big um so i actually don't mind it in the combination of like the multifamily too you know i i think it's appropriate I would also suggest that the the um, you mentioned the carport. It, yeah. I think it actually makes the other one's just this big box. Mm -hmm. Now it's a, it's more cohesive. The carport actually makes the whole thing look a, a little less imposing, mm -hmm. in my in my opinion. Yeah, like it breaks it down into little components with the porch. Yeah, yeah it, I I really do feel like it's a huge improvement, and it all the components really scales down the house, even though it is a really big house because mm -hmm. um, all of the elements kind of break it down into components that doesn't look it's like. Oh, you know, we've got, uh, we one have. is bad, but, uh, but yeah, some of them are good. But yeah, it's, it's a, I just want to pass that around. But yeah, one is totally squished, so it yeah. looks, So the the piece on the the right side um, is kind of concealed by some of the trees and some of the imagery. Is that kind of approximately the size of the piece that was over there originally? It actually looks like it's smaller. It's 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 taller. Oh, that's getting torn mm. torn off. Yes, I think. I think is, was that one of the illegal. I think that's no legal. That is correct. That is one of the ground level illegal mm -hmm. addition. Is that large tree that it's in that top left picture? Is that remaining? That is proposed to be remain. Okay. I mean, I, I like the design. I like the project. I have no problem with the size of the house because it. The, all the design elements really break it down um, and really scales it down. I, I really do appreciate the change of the style um, to make it fit in into like the, the neighborhood there. So. Yeah, I wasn't really, when I reviewed the project at the initially, I wasn't really feeling like it was too big. Um, I actually thought maybe there was a little too much going on on the front facade. Um, and, and I say that a little cautiously because I think you don't want to dial it back too much because it breaks the scale down. But mm -hmm. there's there's like, you know, there's kind of the the two two sort of uh, kind of bookend pieces. There's the middle piece. There's a, kind of different roof forms. There's a lot of rafter tails. You know, the the front portico or porch has kind of the the kind of stair stepping beams that support the the rafter tail ridge beam. Um, the uh, my first thought was there was kind of a, a lot. Um, and and then I think what kept sort of the the little uh, slats at the top of the upper roofs, where the where the mm -hmm. the the, uh, the shingle siding stops, and you get that um, kind of I don't know board and batten or what would be the proper term for it, sort mm -hmm. of uh, mm -hmm. up there, kind of the wainscoting, kind of underneath the roof. I 
I, d- I guess I was just looking at it thinking I'd take one or two things back. Um, I'm not sure what those pieces would I, be. But... I do think it breaks it up though, yeah. because mm-hmm. it's so because there is a lot of house there, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. and those all those collective elements makes it feel less massive. I think, yeah, yeah. It's so it's I th- I think because the house is so large and having so much going on, it does help the massing of it. But I do agree, like you made a really good point about the roofs. So I'm not really sure why that front there, what we're looking at on the screen, you know, you've got um, you've got this third slope of the roof above that outdoor balcony area there. And is that necessary? What if you take that away? It might be a much more simple design, but I don't know, maybe that makes the massing look even bigger. And so it's that's it is, I think it's that combination of a lot going on, but that a lot going on masks the facts that it's such a large massing. It's such a large house. But, uh, but I do appreciate the aesthetic. I think it's, it's, it's a definite mm-hmm. improvement over the, yes, yeah. the house for sure as yeah. it stands now. Um, you know, I, I, I like the sort of look of it. I think it probably the mm-hmm. look of it fits the neighborhood. Um, yeah. And it's, it's a very large property and it's well under FAR mm-hmm. lot coverage. So, I mean, I, I mean, yeah, technically it complies, but just because you can, doesn't mean that you should, you know, and that's more of my mindset of the whole. So yeah, technically it's complying, but it just seems very large, even for that site. I'm very familiar with the street. I walk on it almost every day. So I have a sense of like the scale in the neighborhood and this, it just feels like it's going to, like it may be very big. And it's hard to see too, without, again, seeing the neighboring properties, it would be great if we could start requesting that projects that come before. So this is a general comment for staff that when we look at a project, also seeing elevations with the neighboring properties next to them. So we understand the relationship with the grade, we understand the relationship to the neighbor, and it gives us a better sense of, of overall scale and the relationship with the context. I don't know if that's a requirement now, but something to consider. So, um, I mean, me personally, I, I think it's it's a it's a nice design. Um, you know, I I don't feel like it's too large, and and I think it may just be my own personal kind of tendency towards simplicity that I want to sort of. Um, but I, I don't think that I, I agree with you all that that the detail and the sort of the uh, the design elements, all the little things kind of help reduce the scale and, and size um, of it. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I would be willing to sort of, um, I'll, I'll, you know, I, I, I'm okay with it. Um, I'm curious how everybody else is feeling about it. No, I agree. I, I, I agree with everything you said. I'm, and I'm ready to make a motion to approve it as well so and um for me it's a little bit harder because i do think that it would be great to kind of reconsider the massing some but um i don't know if that means moving that to a chair review which i don't think that maybe that may not be helpful in this case so do you think as far as the massing goes if that is that that roof that covers that what looks like an outdoor patio, kind of a little deck. Part of me thinks as if that roof pulled back so it didn't mm-hmm. extend out past those two side masses or if it was more of a trellis and rather than a solid roof mm-hmm. that, I don't know, I don't know, but it, it, it'd, be, it'd be hard to tell without like- Seeing it, yeah. Or, or is it the trellis that's on the two sides making like the house feel extended yeah. further? Maybe, you know, without the- mm-hmm. The two, two trellises flanking the 
porch. Um, I was just trying to think like to, for your feeling that it's still too massive, like mm -hmm. what would be, because what would be like the step you'd take to sort of. I uh, personally don't think that a minor change like that would change. Yeah. I think so that's, I think that's the concern. I think the, the house itself and the design, the articulation is done really well. The detailing as well, the materials are great. So it's not so much that it's really just the massing. So it's like, how do you change that? And I know if this were going in, you know, I, I don't want to speak for other committees, but, you know, especially when you're doing like additions and changes, there's a lot of consideration about that. You see that all going on throughout South Pasadena when it's a stork house, they're set back. There's like more massing articulation. I don't see that here. And so for me, it's just very, it just feels very massive. Um, but again, I don't want to, I think the rest of the board feels comfortable with it. And so if everybody else feels comfortable with it, I'm willing to say, Hey, that's, I understand that, that this is just my personal, um, my personal interpretation of this design and the drawings based on the context, and my understanding of it. So. So, um, would somebody like to make a motion? I'll make a motion. I'll make a motion to approve the project as submitted. Second that. Um, I guess will staff please take roll call? Board member Carlson? Yes. Board member Hill? No. Vice Chair Sai? Yes. Chair Nichols? Uh, yes. Motion carries. Now I have uh, the 2023 annual commission report. Thank you, Chair, Vice Chair, and members of the board. And uh, this item in front of you is the 2023 annual commission report. Uh, as you're aware, um, um, every year, uh, besides the regular chair, vice chair selections, uh, we also kind of prepare an annual commission report to talk about the, uh, the accomplishment this board has accomplished past year, but also looking forward to the next physical year, the work plan that, um, that this board and also staff will be working on. And also I think all the board member got the invite from our city clerk office regarding the, uh, what is it? Annual commission Congress on June 28th, I think it's Wednesday. So um, as part of that, um, I guess meeting, uh, we need to present uh, annual commission report, not just from this board, but also for other commissions. So that this item is to bring the draft um, annual commission report to this body to review and to see um, if the board has any comments about the accomplishment, what this board has accomplished last year. Also, uh, any suggestion for the work plan is for the next fiscal year, which is 2023 to 2024. So staff is willing to uh, kind of listen to your, your input and then make, make necessary changes. And also as one item will get the uh, a message from the board, kind of separate <laughs> separate item. Uh, staff working with um, uh, Chair Nichols kind of get that message for the uh, actual representing the whole board. And just kind of uh, provide what staff put in for the accomplishment, what this board has accomplished last year is, um, for example, staff brought 20 projects in front of this board for review. There are uh, residential projects, but also there are a couple, um, I think several com uh, commercial projects as well as so new buildings, facade as well as a signage, and also chair of the board commission, oh, yeah, board member Hills <laughs> process approximately 71. <laughs> Chair review application. <laughs> 71. So thank you so much for there's a lot of labor and stuff, applications. Thank you so much for, for helping us. And also a couple items is um this board um review and also approve a brand new commercial commercial buildings at five Pasadena Avenue and also uh Bristol Farm facade um down over that side <laughs> and, and back in this September. 
Also, in addition, there was a special meeting held at this um, location back in December to talk about the uh, objective development standard. Of course, that's work in progress. Staff will bring that particular item back to this board at future meetings. As for the work plans, um, staff identify a couple items, kind of more um, inconsistent while we're going, what staff is going on with the housing element programs. Try to streamline the application process, make the process easier for the homeowners to kind of kind of either to build a new house or do a room addition. As you can tell by the two projects that in front of you tonight, both projects had AD or one has ADU approved, but the other one has proposed to be a, have an ADU. Because based on our municipal code, if the project has a room addition or new house with ADU, staff cannot approve the ADU until the board or the commission approve the, the main project first. So sometimes that can delay the ADU progress. So um, I won't mention any particular pro project, for example, uh, if board or commission approved the, the new house or the remediation. Afterwards, staff then can approve the ADU project. So I think in, in the spirit of uh, encouraging housing productions, um, staff would sort of think of a way that we can encourage a uh, faster process for your average homeowner to rebuild their house, do a remediation, but also a lot of project has ADU too as well. So staff did a little kind of rough calculations I think approximately 35% of the remediation or new single family house project contain ADU components. So if uh, we can speed up the remediation new house project, that will help uh, encourage the new ADU can, uh, production as well. So that's one of my suggested staff suggested items on the work plan, but um, board members definitely can um, provide staff comments based on the com accomplishment, also any idea any program that uh, boards think we should be working on for next year i would like to with respect to samantha's comment about requesting on future packets that there's an elevation showing the adjacent properties so we can really evaluate more accurately the concern about size if that's possible mm -hmm. Oh, so on the site plan too, I, I thought that was a requirement, but um, for the Brunswick, they were only showing the south house outline, but they didn't show the north house outline on the site plan. But I thought that was a requirement already. But So staff can kind of generalize. Um, I think when staff bring a, a staff report packet to the this board, uh, some of the item it could be expanded to include more information. So mm -hmm. it would be easier for the board to deliver, deliver it and also make a decision at particular line. So mm -hmm. I think I would summarize as one additional item that staff can add to kind of have a more complete additional items that uh, a staff report packet. For, for your consideration, so we can, in turn, return, speed up the process. You can you can make a decision at the same time. That being said, I think the packets are great. Like I think everything that we're given, I think is just that one element, the context that has been lacking in some of the presentations, just so we can, so we can really evaluate and how and it impacts neighbors. We've had it in, on some projects yeah. and I noticed those projects got approved really quickly. Yeah. Yeah. I, I remember. That, yeah. Um, I do have another, if th we're talking about general comments, right? Um, so just, this isn't specific design review board, but things I've been hearing in the community about kind of the length of time that it takes for approvals. And I know you guys hear that I'm sure a lot um, in terms of, you know, additions, renovations, and so what I'm hearing more, and this is not so much planning department, but building and safety is that the process often drags on and it's taking a significant amount of time just for like simple approvals where something will have been approved, you know, at least verbally approved, but then they're waiting for stamps and they're just waiting for the final, you know, um, right to issue for the, for the permit. So I'm hearing that amongst neighbors. So I just wanted to bring that to everybody's attention. 
I don't know of ways to kind of improve that if there's a way to kind of streamline the various departments and the checking, you know, I, I don't want to call it any specific departments, but there's particular ones who have um, held up the process if, from what I've heard. Um, so I just want to put that out there because it's what I'm, that's what I'm hearing amongst the public. Yeah, thank you, board member Hill. I know, I know many of you have your own project or have neighbor has project go to the city. So you would definitely understand. Uh, so the, the, the goal of this one, that's definitely kind of streamline the process. And I think one of the uh, accomplishment is we did get uh, SARS uh, in the process of working this, with the city consultant to implementing an online per permitting system. I'm not, I know a lot of the jurisdiction, even my previous agency, they all have an online permitting, permanent tracking system with um, planning, building public works, fire department, they can track in and out the process that is very quickly, easily. So, so we're definitely in the progress of doing that. Also, we're anticipating going live, actually internally, this amount of staff starting in July. So we should have that system, uh, a, thing, a thing within the staff capacity of when starting in July. So that, that's definitely a, one of the accomplishments that um, we put on here as a part of the board, but also there are definitely other items that we need to work on. So that's why we identified several items on the work plan that hopefully, and also any additional item that you can provide as well. Thank you. Any other comments? Right. Um, I guess we now move on. No. Two comments from the city council liaison. Um, council member Braun, I think she's attending a SCAC conference tonight, so she's unable to attend this meeting. Okay. Uh, and then we now move on to comments from our design review board members. Are there any comments from the board? No, no comments. No comments. <laughs> uh, comments from subcommittees. Uh, we don't have any subcommittees, do we? Mm -mm. As far as I know. Um, uh, so I guess. Uh, um, thank you, board members. We're now moving on to comments from staff. Uh, Allison Becker, the deputy director for the community development department. Just a quick plug again with a couple of dates um, as. Uh, Dom mentioned at the top of the meeting, we are um, finally getting to uh, the approval process for our housing element. So in the event that you are able to come and express your support, um, the uh, Planning Commission will be hearing um, a presentation on the uh, element on the 17th. It's a special meeting at 530. And then the City Council will take that up on the 30th. Um, having cleared that hurdle, we will jump right into a uh, general plan update and downtown specific plan and uh, mark your calendars for two um, charrettes happening in June on uh, the 3rd of June and uh, the 17th of June. So it'll be a busy summer for us. Uh, thank you, as always, for your commitment to excellent design and uh, properly scaled urbanism <laughs> in the uh, city of South Pasadena. And um, yeah, see you next month. Thanks. Thank, Thank you. you. So um, I guess we, I'm not sure what the right way to say it is, but adjourn uh, this regularly scheduled meeting uh, for Thursday, June 1st, 2023. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>